The movie begins in 2004. Destiny, a newbie at a nightclub, is getting ready for her first shift when Justice, a co-worker, climbs the stage. Destiny has her first customer, but things don't go as easily as she had hoped because the girls already have their regulars. Despite her inexperience, after giving the casino the majority of her profits as a charge, she finds it difficult to win them over. She returns to her grandmother's house in her hometown. Before departing, she gets up at 3 p.m. to get ready for her work. She discovers that her grandma has sold her jewelry, so Fate sends her some money, which the old lady accepts gratefully. Destiny is intrigued by Ramona's main stage performance after she arrives at the club. When Ramona passes Fate, she says to her, doesn't money make you aroused? Destiny joins the star on the rooftop after the show and requests a light. They end up having a pleasant conversation. The newbie admits to not having enough abilities and performing poorly in her first few days. Ramona consoles her and offers that they work together, mentoring her and showing her some of her movements. In the year 2014, a different version of Destiny was being interviewed for a magazine story. When things go out of control, the interviewer inquires, and Destiny replies that Ramona was always in control. Back in 2004, Ramona instructed Fate how to pole dance the next day before the customers arrived. Destiny is once again awestruck by Ramona's deft skills. When they are both catching their breath and laughing, she tries it out with the help of her lovely tutor. Diamond is allowed to enter. Ramona introduces her to Fate and proposes that she educate the beginner on how to lap dance properly. The girls are getting ready in the changing room and speaking about the assumptions that people have about strippers and how their real lives differ from the character they present at the club. Destiny thinks back to the classification. The three tiers of Wall Street boys were taught to her by Ramona. The girls can get around it since the ones at the bottom who don't undertake illicit employment don't have much money. If they do, the people in the middle get a little dirty, but they don't go overboard. Finally, there are those at the very top. They enter through the back door, get private rooms and spend a lot of money, between $10,000 and $15,000 every night. Because there were no cameras, they could do whatever they pleased without fear of repercussions. Working with Ramona improved her luck and allowed her to make a lot more money. They also strengthened their friendship. And Dorothy, as her grandmother refers to her, goes shopping. Ramona invites her over and shows her project of designing a swimsuit line. We meet Juliet, Ramona's daughter, after learning about the future label Simona. Ramona and Dorothy have a passionate conversation later that night about their future dreams and goals. We're then returned to the interview where Dorothy inquires about how much of her narrative will be included in the piece. She doesn't want to provide a negative impression of strippers or add to the stigma because she was simply trying to make a living during her stripper days. Destiny is earning money, acquiring her own house and caring for her grandmother, and even returning to school. She was studying at the counter when a man named Stephen came up to her and complimented her calligraphy and sweet-talked her. She claims it's because she doesn't have access to a computer. Later, she's studying on her new laptop in the girls' locker room. According to Dorothy, the best year was 2007. She met Johnny, her boyfriend, with whom she had been battling for months about how much more money she was making than Wall Street people and how she had even managed to buy her first car. Dorothy recalls Usher walking in on the last beautiful night of her life. On the stage, everyone was dancing. Then came 2008, which was the worst financial calamity in decades. It's not the best moment to get pregnant but Johnny promises to look after her until she's two and a half years old. Dorothy had a daughter, Lily, in 2011. After the last spat, the enraged mother ejected Johnny, leaving her alone with her daughter. There is no work to be done. She attempted to contact Stephen, the tech person who had promised her a computer back in the day. But, as it turned out, he now has his own family, so she crossed out the last name from her list of former clients. That isn't going to help her now. Dorothy attempts unsuccessfully to get work in retail. She falls into the vicious we want employees with experience, but we can't give you that experience loop. As a result, she is obligated to return to the club. That has drastically changed. Her pals have all left and the new girls are obnoxious. The club is almost completely vacant. Even the housewife found herself working in striptease. Customers are unwilling to spend money on the new girls, so they do what they are not supposed to do in order to obtain cash. Destiny finds herself in a predicament where she must comply with a request for money. She is embarrassed with herself, especially after learning that she has been duped. The client failed to pay her the agreed-upon sum. When Destiny sees her best friend, whom she hasn't seen in years. She leaves the champagne room and returns to the club. Ramona and Dorothy catch up over a cup of coffee, and Ramona informs Dorothy about her recent activities since the financial crisis began. Mercedes found Ramona a job in a retail store near the club. Her fiancé Dragon was jailed, and she can't afford a lawyer, 
so she's dealing with her own problems. Ramona's retail job was not going well, so she returned to the club, but the latter was equally unpleasant, so she devised a strategy. Recognize potential clients, make them drunk. Taking them to the nightclub is a good idea. Push their credit card as far as they can in order to receive a percentage of their club expenditure. Their praise, on the other hand, wasn't always so obedient. Some others were caught up in their scheme, and as a result, they lost money. That's when Ramona realized that instead of waiting for their targets to get drunk, she could give her scheme a boost. They would use spices in their beverages, ketamine to lose their memories, and MDMA to feel euphoric and enjoy themselves. By the end of her story, her scheme had worked and the money was still rolling in. Desperate Destiny was invited to join Ramona's squad. She decides to join them on their next adventure. While he was distracted, there was the prey. Ramona adds some spice to the cocktail, and they make it to the club barely awake. Ramona swipes his golden card while Gary snatches his wallet. To be safe, the plan was declared a success after a large celebration. They made the decision to alter the recipe. After the first cook had knocked them out, the second cook called the second one out of the oven. They chose not to fish for strangers, instead referring to them as old friends, and it didn't take long for them to catch them. It was a new journey to the club every day. It almost worked too well. Ramona has moved into a new apartment. Destiny was the one who bought her grandmother's house. Mercedes has engaged a lawyer for her fiancé, while Annabelle is settling into her new flat with her cat. The girls went so far as to outsource and grow their crew. They showed the new girls how to play the game. Around the holidays, hustling became a way of life for them. They gathered at Ramona's house, where they were joined by Juliet, Ramona's daughter, Destiny's grandmother, and Lily. Everyone was rejoicing and exchanging gifts making for a genuinely wonderful occasion. Let's go back to the 2014 interview. Dorothy is now the one who is inquiring. She inquires about Elizabeth's financial situation as a child in order to excuse their conduct, as they were in a horrible situation. Dorothy is eager to begin the interview because she does not want to be forced into a position that will cause her to disparage the women she regards to be her sisters. Elizabeth just happened to mention that Ramona had said the same thing the day before. Dorothy is taken aback. She is plainly enraged at Ramona. She does decides to go ahead and finish the interview. Everything was going swimmingly in 2013 until Ramona's greed got the best of her. Despite Dorothy's protestations, she decided she no longer needed the club and would meet their clients at hotels. Don welcomes a new member to the crew. When Mercedes is with one of Ramona's clients, an event occurs. The redhead was reckless, messy, and a coke addict. The drug dealer believes he can leap into the pool from the first floor but he falls to the ground and is driven to the hospital by the girls. They try to contact Ramona, but she is occupied with rescuing Don. When Destiny returns home, she discovers that her grandmother has died. Ramona attends the funeral and consoles the grieving woman. She also invites her to a concert that night to help her relax and earn some money. Dorothy informs Elizabeth that she initially assumed there would be some sort of goal, and that once she reached it, she would quit and start over. The interviewer then inquired as to whether this was the case with Doug. Dorothy dismisses Ramona as a fraud and denies knowing someone with such a name. Elizabeth delves deeper into Ramona's remarks about Dorothy. Specifically, Dorothy wasn't simply seeking vengeance, she was also attempting to make friends. Her mother abandoned her at her grandmother's house and fled. This caused her to have a difficult time. Elizabeth inquired as to what had transpired between Ramona and herself. When Elizabeth arrived home, she turned off the recording cassette and showed her off. She receives a phone call from Dorothy, who begins to tell her the narrative. Ramona has known Doug for a long time. He was having family problems and was brought to the club by a buddy to help him feel better. Destiny had a passionate conversation with him, but he was simply another target for Ramona. He was sacked after the girls used up his company's credit card. Doug phoned Destiny to get a refund because he couldn't afford to pay his mortgage. When Ramona notices Destiny's compassion, she wrestles her down and grabs the phone before it hangs up. Doug filed a police report since he had voice recordings of the rogue Don spilling the beans while inebriated. Don was asked to wear a wire to assist the cops in a sting operation. Dorothy thought something wasn't quite right, and when she told Ramona about it in the car, she just said she was paranoid because none of the victims wanted to admit they were ashamed. The police had no leads. There was a story in the newspaper about an architect who had racked up a $135,000 bill after four nights of pleasure. He couldn't recall anything. Yes, he returned three times more, and the girls were taken to the station Ramona while the money was being withdrawn. Mercedes pays a visit to her fiancé who is imprisoned. Unable while in her apartment, Dorothy accepted the police's offer to provide a safer future for her daughter, Lily, at her home. 
pregnant, Elizabeth receives a call from Dorothy months after the interview, asking about Ramona and what she genuinely said about her. When Ramona's apprentice learns that her mentor keeps her picture among the valuables she carries with her at all times, she breaks down in tears. Ramona never said anything negative about Dorothy. She was always there for her. She should give her a call. Elizabeth advises, Destiny avoided jail time by pleading guilty to grand larceny and attempted violence. Ramona was given a five-year probationary period. Mercedes and Annabel spent four months in jail on weekends and were sentenced to five years of probation. Ramona makes a touching contrast at the end of the movie. The entire country has become a nightclub, with some people tossing money and others dancing, and everyone is hustling to the finish. We hope that you enjoy your time and have a good day.